Okay, I am so excited today. Welcome to Biohacking Superhuman Performance. I am Natalie Nidham, and today on our episode, we have a very special guest who has like one of the best names ever, uh, Nadine Artemis, um, who is, I think I announced her in the group as the, I don't, I don't know if I called you an essential oils expert or queen or something, but you are all of those things. So Nadine, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, thrilled to have you. And Nadine is the founder and owner and I believe chief formulator of an incredible company called Living Libations. And um, I love, and I'm sure it's intentional, the alliteration, Living Libations, it's luscious, <laughs> rich, <laughs> and, uh, and it speaks so much to what you do and who you are. So Nadine, why don't you just tell us a little bit about how you came to this. Like I have, I'm, I'm the proud owner of the book, which I'm, we're going to talk about today. I think everybody should have this actually, but, um, and it reads not like a textbook. It reads like a poem, like a, like I said to you, like a poem, a manifesto, like this incredible testament to nature and the body and oils and all that stuff. So Nadine, tell us, and you talk about how you got into oils in this, but why don't you tell us now a little bit oh, about thank you. how you got to where you are today? <laughs> I, so one of, you reminded me, one of the sweetest comments I've had, and it's been a few about the book, they call it a page turner, which I just think is so cute. <laughs> just, you know, because it is not a fiction. Um, no Agatha Christie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love the word libations too, because it's this... Um, outpouring of nectar in honor of a deity so i just feel like too it's like because we use all the distillates of plants which are the outpourings of all the plants and in honor of ourselves and the earth so it's just such a great word mm. um and always with the, like how and when did it start i'm always like where how far do i go back but really like i definitely feel so much of my childhood really like imbued and set the stage for my love of nature I mean, just, and it's just simple. I just had access to it. We had a cottage. I went to summer camp. I loved looking at the patterns and mixing mud. And it just, nature was just always to me, uh, you know, the essence of everything. And um, so then I had like a grade, I did mix. I, you know, took my mother's exquisite joy perfume and mixed it with the skull and crossbones under the sink. So I was always mixing and matching and I would crush eyeshadows and put them with lip balm and stuff. But then it was really uh, grade nine was a significant moment because I had to do a science fair project and we had free reign. So um, I found a book on perfumery in the library and I was like, I was obsessed with perfume at the time. I had like all the micro bottles and and I would mix them. But then I got to learn new things about perfumery because I didn't really know where these bottles, like, or, you know, what was perfume and not, I mean, these were all synthetic, but in its history and in its essence, perfume is supposed to be, you know, from the true distillations of plants. And it talked about the history right. of it in Egypt, where it was sort of came from. And uh, I just was so fascinated with all of that. And the book suggested that you could find the distillates called essential oils at a health food store. So we drove to the big city of Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> I got to sniff out my first, um, you know, just ones like sweet orange, ylang, but it was really, it just resonated. I was just like, whoa, because I did like smelling. Didn't quite get, you know, natural synthetic and that right. real division, but I was like, something else is going on here. It was still mixed in with like watermelon bubble gum and all those other smells. Yeah, yeah. Something was resonating. And then, um, you know, the body shop, like, and these are kind of my teen years. And that was like, oh, that it seemed neat. It seemed natural only to discover that it wasn't. So then I'm like 18, I'm off at university living on my own. Um, I was so happy I didn't go to residence. So I just had my own place and then I had my own kitchen and stuff, which was really helpful for everybody's future now in living libations because I was able to cook and conco concoct. So the first, like, so I was really getting into food because it was like, you got to make your own and what is this? And you know, what am I cooking? And then I was skipping school and Lisa Benet was on a talk show and she was talking about the connection between like food and health and the health of the environment. And that was like totally new information mm -hmm. and fascinating. And so I also had to walk home to my little home at university by a health food store. It was just like a one in a house on a street. It was called Grains and Beans and Things. <laughs> <laughs> 
And, you know, I bought every book in there and every grain and bean and was making all my own stuff. I was like making like oat milk and cashew milk way before it became. It was the thing. Yeah. yeah like I gave up dairy. You know, I wasn't eating. Uh, I only ate organic and non-processed foods from like that kind of moment forward. And then what I also learned was like how to read a label, like really what's in those supermarket foods? What are secondary ingredients? Um, you know, books from natural past, like European natural past, like if you have a headache or eczema or like here was all these other things. And it was just so opening, so mind opening. And then that just quickly translated to like, what am I putting on my body? What is, what are these ingredients? Oh my God, this is total BS. There's no pineapple in here. The fuzzy peach bath oil has never been impeached. Like <laughs> it was just BS. should be impeached over this peach oil. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So it was a really quick transition to like then concocting my own and getting beeswax and making lip balms and stuff. And I was just using oils that I could find, like essential oils. Mm -hmm. But then I was reading, you know, books that were talking about things I didn't have and I had to find them. I had to like get a whiff of like why they were so excited in ancient cultures or why was this, you know, or what if I put that and that together or why did the Egyptians put this and this together and what did that smell like so I had to so I really started just like sourcing I was writing letters everywhere you know this is like pre-internet don't no kidding. It's like how did it happen <laughs> I remember I made like this little and I even had like little Egyptian hieroglyphs on this little letterhead I made it was called Artemis Essentials and I started importing as a university student essential oils into Canada and stuff that's amazing and then by so then, then I, it was like graduation time. I was 22. And then I opened up North America's first full concept aromatherapy store on Queen Street in Toronto. I know Queen Street. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I, didn't have, grow, I didn't grow up here, so I wouldn't know your shop. But yeah, it was fun. And then we had so many fun. And what a great street. What a great area at that time. Yeah, it was so fun. You know, I'd pop down to city TV and do like some breakfast television spots. And then we'd have like some, you know, rock and roll people come in or, you know, different. like I met Sass Jordan and Alanis oh, Morissette. And we had like, I'd make them custom blended perfume. So it was so much fun. But then I also really yearned to like uh, get out of the city. And really, in my 20s, I was also starting to realize really the fundamentals are like we need clean air. Mm -hmm. land and pure water yeah so that's where we are now amazing yeah that's great. So, so you're like in this incredible place so you're outside of toronto so guys i first of all so excited about Nadine because <laughs> she's canadian we're so neighbors practically. Talent. um and also that you live on in this like incredible nature reserve and you know learning about you and your business what really struck me is how the your principles run through everything that you do like your offices like your headquarters as you call them how your staff eats how you treat them like it's it's so rare to find a business owner who is able to carry that through right to the right down to the products that you send out like the glass and the, and the and the the top which is this beautiful wood. like I, you know i'm not going to want to throw this bottle away <laughs> with it i'm going to want to keep it <laughs> Yay. <laughs> well, it's a fun game, I think, to like, you know, have what you see, you know, and again, integrity is always like, you know, it's a thing that's alive. Like, if you feel, you know, integrity in area, it's something you're keeping alive. It's like really, uh, as Ron and I talked about so long ago, and what also makes him so great, that's my, my partner, Ron, he was like, you know, commitment, it's a living thing. Mm -hmm. And so is integrity, but it's sort of a fun game too. It's like, well, how can I sew this and weave this into the fabric of our lives? And like, oh, here we can make decisions here that would, you know, do that. And certainly not a perfect realm. And I've made lots of mistakes along the way, but you just keep, you know, inspire. I think integrity is really an inspirer of innovation as well. For sure. So that's amazing. Okay. Well, this is great. So now let's get into what it is that people want to hear about here. Yeah. Let's talk about these oils. So some of them, you know, there's so much we could talk about. And, and clearly, you know, when we're talking about biohackers, which is a lot of the people that tend to watch this particular podcast and the people in the group, uh, the biohacking superhuman performance group on Facebook is we're always, you know, so often we're looking to technology and we're looking to um, these crazy supplements. We, a lot of us are into this realm of peptides, which is so fascinating. 
And we tend to forget the, like to me, essential oils, because they've been around for so long, because it's so inherently part of our, our sensory system, we forget. We forget how powerful they can really be in terms of affecting so many different areas of our health, right? Yes. So, so your book, Renegade Beauty, it focuses on beauty, and yet you can't talk about beauty without talking about the health of your skin, the health of your microbiome, the health of every other, you know, like what you're putting, as you say, as you're putting on your body, ending up in your body, that's ultimately affecting the expression of your health. Yeah. So, so, so some of the questions that have come up, which I think are really good just to, for us to explore, is this whole idea of, and you alluded to it a little bit, this idea of how do you understand the quality of the essential oils? Because, you know, there's, it, definitely it's a bandwagon a lot of people got on. We know that there's a lot of the, of, you know, direct marketing companies that have really jumped on the essential oil bandwagon. Everybody claims that their stuff is super pure and super awesome. So how do we as users and consumers start to kind of understand that realm? Yeah, it's like we've used all the good words, so they've kind of lost meaning. Like, you know, 100% natural, 100% pure. It doesn't really mean anything at this day and age, except those are the words we have to use. Um, <laughs> Well, the great, I love essential oils and I'm so glad they came into my life because they really are the a palette of like information and color and sensory union and gifts from the earth that I just, there's so many applications for and really, um, you know, at this time in the planet, but I mean that in a broad sense, not like today, but in this, in these, in this time, in this last even hundred years, they're, they're so useful for us. And especially in modern times, because they're, they're so beautiful and they do appeal to our senses in a way that like, you know, taking a herbal tincture just doesn't speak to you in that same sensory phenomenon. Um, and they're just the finest medicine because they are like, I'll be general here, but to some degree, they are all antifungal, antiviral, anti what are all the antis antibacterial anti-inflammatory they have all this so to varying degrees antioxidant antioxidant so you got like clove which we all know is a great potent antiseptic medicine but rose auto the distillation of rose is is almost right up there with its same veracity and able to like kill stuff like you know like in a petri dish vitamin c right What's that? Like rose hips are an incredible source of yeah. Vitamin C, Even know? though like there is no um, there's no vitamin content to essential oils. So the, right. the other interesting thing is they kind of they remind me of peptides a little bit. Yeah. Because to me they exist in that form and formlessness area, like where a peptide is is literally there's a material matter to it, but mm -hmm. really it's it's doing the cell signaling. Yes. It's, at the end of the day, so it's like it's sort of its spirit is a little more potent than the than the actual thing yeah that, even yeah, though they're going to the amino acids you wouldn't think could do much yes and with the essential oils again it's this they do they're definitely matter but then they're molecular you know they're this molecular messaging that they do in the body is just so phenomenal so when you inhale an essential oil you know even if you can't smell, so you got it here, you literally just have a smelling disorder, but you're smelling it, if you know what I mean? You're inhaling those, it. Yeah. yeah, you're inhaling it. So those molecules will travel up into the hypothalamus and then start to do physiological work on the body. And then they just happily leave, you know, after a couple hours. So that is really interesting. So that, so in a sense, they are acting as a signaling molecule. Like, you know, I've always, like, you don't, you don't. Yeah, I'm sure like a deep hardcore science would take task to our, you know, they would probably say, well, it's like that or that, but yeah, they are signaling stuff in the body to happen. Well, if you hit your hypothalamus and initiate a cascade, yeah, it's a signaling molecule, right? Because I mean, I could put oil on my arm, like, you know, like I used, um, and we can talk about this as well. Like I burnt, I burnt my hand in December. Like I branded oh. myself on a toaster. Oven. Oh no. <laughs> and, um, and I happen to have just gotten um, this copper peptide, the GHKCU yeah. in a serum, but I didn't get it for about a week. But at this, but within two weeks, and I can't even see my scar. It looks great. Like, but see, you could add. You can, see, you can see just a little mark there. 
scale. Oh yeah, yeah. But if you take their copper peptide information and then combine it with like frankincense and lavender. Right, which I didn't have at the time. <laughs> Now you'll never be without. <laughs> I will never be without. No, but so it is fascinating in a way that, that the oil, like, so we think of, of essential oils, um, we think of things of putting them on the skin to affect an action. But that is like so fascinating with the oils, how they can, I believe they can call, cause vasodilation. I would think that is how they would help with, might help with a headache. Yeah, or then people feel like, oh, because we're so used to ingesting things, oh, do I have to ingest the oils to work? And you don't have to do that either. I mean, you can with some of them. There are ones that are, you know, like all the ones we normally use in culinary, like your yeah, like cilantro, the cardamom, yeah, from that family. Of, those are, are fine to use. Um, and you can use them in cooking and flavoring because a lot of the food and flavor industry literally starts with things like essential oils, right. which they then synthesize and then turn to like flavor orange juice or liqueur or cigarettes you know like menthols and stuff but again it's it's synthesized from what was once natural but they really are these great you know systems that can help like we can talk about you know like there's obviously the toxicity of things that we've been putting on our bodies and all kinds of things so we can you know obviously want to stop that and then maybe think well we'll just at least get to neutral but it's like no why don't we use things we've got to brush our teeth and lubricate our bodies like let's use things that enhance our immune system and like benefit, like why not use something that, you know, inhibits the, the, cell, the enzymes that degrade our collagen and elastin? Why not use things that prevent um, inflammatory cascades in the body? Why not use substances that are able to clean up pathogens yet work with the friendly bacteria? That's what I mean too, they're so for this time. And it's interesting because of the wide use of antibiotics and we now have this antibiotic resistance mm -hmm. because antibiotics have their place but they're also these indiscriminate sort of assassins yeah. of, the, of the of the microbiome in our body and so there's a time and place for them but we've overused them like you know an average liter of milk has like so many micrograms of um tetracycline in it for example and it's it's in the food antibiotics are used in the food systems of factory farming and so even in europe year a few years ago they started like well what if we add oregano to the food supply like literally the essential oil of oregano and then they were finding they could use antibiotics less so what because that's what we need right now we need things that can kill things but not disturb the microbiome yeah yeah for sure president well because what happens so often with an antibiotic you hear about it all the time somebody has an infection they use an antibiotic which thankfully, in, in a best case scenario, we'll get rid of the, the pathogen that was causing the infection, but it'll wipe out their microbiome. Yeah, and, and then maybe they're left with like 30% like of people that take a very common antibiotic, I can't remember the name of, are left with OCD and anxiety. Mm -hmm. well, Why? It, because it's got brain microbiome. connection. Yeah. 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 It wipes out your own microbiome. And, and the worst part is, and you've heard of these people who've had an infection, they get over it, and then they get sick again. Well, you're kind of a sitting duck waiting for the next bug to come along, right? Yeah, because we've left less of our defenses. Yeah. And then on a, just even a simple skincare level, when we scrub and rub with, with chemicals and synthetics, and we're using synthetic like sodium lauryl sulfate or like the benzyl peroxide for the acne, then what's happening is we're literally messing with the microbiome on our skin, mm -hmm. and we're leaving our skin especially our face is so vulnerable. It's like kind of leaving the front door open when you've gone on a holiday. Well, and, we're not and, leaving it with our defense system intact. Well, for sure. And not to turn this into an infomercial for your products or anything, <laughs> but you know, if we're talking about today where people, you know, we're de dealing with this really scary COVID-19 bug that, you know, is highly transmittable. It's highly contagious. People are going at their hands with these um, antibacterial sprays mm -hmm. and we don't realize that we have a microbiome shield on our skin. It's and one reason trying. why they ban triclosan in hand sanitizers because triclosan is like an antibiotic but it's a slightly different class and it's very disruptive to like aquatic uh, systems so not yeah. a good thing to put on our bodies but they uh, eventually banned it because what was happening is you think you're cleaning but you're actually disrupting the microbiome that was going to help be that because the skin's microbiome is part of our innate immune system, mm -hmm. but they didn't take it out of toothpaste. So it's out of our hands, soaps and sanitizers, but triclosan is still in toothpaste. 
Wow. Okay. Well then let's talk a little bit about what the alternatives are. So yeah. for example, like we can start here. We've had, yeah. we have, but you can, you can take, you can, we have that, but you can also just take alcohol, like a good organic, buy a good organic vodka or something. And then at a, like a higher proof and then add tea tree or something. I mean, it's that basic. There have been studies done on tea tree that at like under 1%, it's effective against H1N1. I know we got a different beast on our hands right now, but like, that's good. You know yeah. what I mean? And like, it study, yeah, it's so, so then you can just easily even make your own too, but you just add some essential oils to that. And then you've just all of a sudden taken that alcohol and like upped its game. So that, I mean, which is incredible, right? So you've got this product on your website. It's mm -hmm. called um, Illum and Hand Sanitizer. Is that right? Yeah, Illum Hand Cleanse. It's like a cleanser for your hands. You can do surfaces and stuff as well. Right. But, but you can also make your own. Yeah. Right. So, but let's go back. So then let's go back one step and then we're going to talk about more specifics, but let's go back one step to how do, how do people distinguish between the good essential oils and the ones they want to stay away from? Like yes. how, what makes a good essential oil? Like what's the, in the hierarchy of what the good stuff is and the stuff you can, that's more commercial. Yes. How do we, how do we do Yeah. So just like, as we, a lot of us know, for sure your people, like we know about quality and food and all those kind of things, right? Like there's sort of the mass produced stuff and then there's like the fine wine. But the thing is too, like sometimes in that, like we literally have fake food. Some of it's not real. Mm -hmm. And so there can be adulterations in essential oils as well. And it's, I mean, they've been adulterating, they, you know, I mean, essential oils have been ingredients since like, I mean, it was sort of first discovered, like the lavender, I mean, it was made before, but then there was sort of a modern discovery right. and like, oh, it heals burns. And like, now it became more of an industry kind of like the modern distillation yeah. of essential oils. And um, it's so crafty. And I write about it a lot in my book, like even these Franken per Frankenstein perfumes, I call them, because they're like literally growing E. coli and like making those into aromas and stuff. Are they like, really? Yeah, it's like crazy. So there's many ways where you can add like a menthol or you can, you can literally add nature identicals, which are synthetics or even just like not good stuff. Or you can take a component of like Melissa's often adulterated. Let's see, this is a very, it's, it's a rare oil. It's not an uncommon plant like lemon balm, yeah. but it all depends on how much essential oil is yielded from the plant. That's, that's how the pricing goes. So neroli, orange blossoms, collected in a grove in Tanzania, beautifully distilled. I mean, you need a lot of plant matter to make oils. Like, so for roses, you need 60 rose heads to make one drop. You're kidding. No. So that's how, you see also how beautifully concentrated these things are. Yeah. Yeah. And then each drop is a whole world that contains over, like we keep discovering more, but one drop has over 500 different chemical constituents. Hmm. It's like a whole world in there. And that, you know, you can't just replicate in a lab, but, but sometimes we can pass things under our nose and think they're right. So with lemon balm, there's a lot of lemon notes like for Melissa. So it's easy to take the citral from a lemongrass or lemon oil and then mix that to become a Melissa. And a common, like the common nose wouldn't necessarily know. So there's sort of like, a, you could look into the hardcore science and study like the, the lab testing and everything, but mm -hmm. most people don't even know how to read that. So I like to also give practical information and yeah. where you get your oils you want to have. Um, we started including la our lab tests it's just so we just have sent them send our stuff to the third party lab and then we just put that up so that people can see that because we get the c of a's from our distillers and that kind of stuff but we really just wanted to do third party testing so there's that and then you also want to be able to there should be a latin name there should be where was it grown i mean like where country how it's distilled because there is generally you know when we're saying essential oils we're talking about the steam distilled but it can yeah. also include uh, some cold pressed citruses, or you've got the CO2 extractions. So there's some variations, but we're using it generally speaking. And then also I tell people smell, just smell. So you can take all that information away and just smell. And when you put like a frankincense from a couple brands together, you're going to see right away. I used to do that at my store where I'd cover them up, kind of like the Coke Pepsi challenge. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really fascinating because people, you know, they would get it every time you get, there's just like, sometimes they're a little more subtle, the real deal that they don't, because, or if you have a fake peppermint, it's like kind of hits you over the head, like a candy, like a candy cane peppermint, but real peppermints, like just so beautiful. 
or and then there's even little tricks of the trade like um, you want real cinnamon when you're using cinnamon but a lot of people call it cinnamon but it's actually casea bark just like when you go to a health food store or something and you're looking to get cinnamon it's often not cinnamon powder it's the casea bark or yeah. there's some blue oils like german chamomile which are this beautiful inky navy blue yeah um but then often people will sell tanacetum anum as german chamomile now tanacetum anum the common name is blue tansy it's a beautiful oil it has all of its own beauty in its own right it's a little bit less expensive than German chamomile, but if you're buying German chamomile, you want German chamomile. If you want blue tansy, you want blue tansy. So there's sort of some of that. So the, the layers of adulteration are, are many. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's a bit of a blind item, right? So for most consumers, they wouldn't know, you know, yeah. it smells like, pepper, yeah. it smells like cinnamon. Yeah. Um, and even if you're smelling a synthetic peppermint, it still smells like more natural than, you know, Calvin Klein CK1 or something, you know, you're still feeling like you're in that realm. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting when you bring up CK1 because I think, and this goes back a little bit to how physiologically active um, essential oils are mm -hmm. that people are really just starting to understand. I mean, I learned about it in school. You learned about it eons ago. But if a, if a fragrance has the power to be a hormone, an endocrine disrupting chemical, like if it can actually mess up the way that your body expresses its hormones, it right away, this tells you that this, this channel of communication in the body, and of course with fragrance, it's also it hitting your skin, being absorbed mm -hmm. in the body, the liver's got to deal with it. But it's a very powerful, like this is a powerful modality and we have to treat it res with respect. So, yeah. so in terms of understanding the quality of oils um does pricing come into it like is yeah generally speaking like you know, so much, your radar go up kind yeah, of yeah like i mean you're pretty much probably like well, again some oils aren't expensive like lemon eucalyptus generally lavender if it's a it's, there can be some rare distillations but it's funny because those aren't that expensive but they're often also the most adulterated so it doesn't like even though eucalyptus is pretty decently priced it's so like adulterated so hard like you really got to focus on getting pure stuff because it's also in high demand as like kind of a mm -hmm. right like even think about just walking going to a supermarket and then the, all those things they fragrance with you know like those kind of fresh pine smells and stuff yeah so yeah price and then yeah some of those rare oils are like that rose that takes 60 rose heads to make one drop you know and that's the steam distilled rose that's like i i you know probably about 140 140 for a five mil as opposed to like a ten ten dollars wow and what would so you use that for well it's so lovely i i it's actually really analgesic on one level it's actually can numb it's very good voluntary helps speed up healing but to, it's one of the uh, skincare queens you know you could have a blemish or anything we could put it in so much of our skincare we even actually put it in our oral care because it's it's you think it's just rose but it's such a workhorse that's so incredible um, and it's so interesting because again, given this, this, I, you know, I don't know, I think we need to talk more about this whole marriage of these peptides and, and oils. We were talking about skincare earlier mm -hmm. as, I mean, what fascinated me is in your book, you talk, there's a whole chapter on the sun, which of course talks about skin and, you know, our biohacking community will be familiar with these concepts that you talk about, which is to see that first morning light with your bare eyes, to avoid wearing sunglasses during the day so that you get the proper signaling to the brain. But then you're talking also about building that, you know, because everybody's all crazy about sun damage and sun, skin cancer and the whole nine yards. And you make such a great argument, not even an argument, like such a great case for the sun not being the bad guy for the chemicals that we're putting on our skin that are virtually taking this you know this sunshine sunlight which is built for us like it's almost made for us right that we, yeah we've evolved to use to our advantage for bone health and skin health and all this other stuff and that barrier that we put on like literally turns it and it's almost like it turns it against us yeah um, yeah but moving into the oils like frankincense and then sandalwood like blew me away like yeah. wood 
can be um, like it, it reverses. Yeah, it prevents the cells going down a malvolent pathway, meet, like kind of right, like I, you think of um, when things go wrong in the body, kind of gets disorganized. It yeah. literally prevents that disorganization of the cells. And like there's two or three studies, I believe, that I cited in there. It was like yeah. one, one. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's what I mean too. It's not just like, because again, also aromatherapy, it's like so potpourri and hallmark. Yeah. You know, and it can be because now there's lavender glade air fresheners. So yeah. there's that. And that's not real lavender. Um, and then it's like there this like medicine and like it's like sandalwood. It, it's so beautiful. You could use straight sandalwood as the best deodorant, like one drop under each pit. You can put it on, a, you know, surgery you have just had. You could put it on a spot, you know, and it's just going to do some work for you. So how do you decide? You know, like this is the thing, right? Because you just mentioned sandalwood for deodorant. You mentioned it for post-surgical repair. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure that you've got five or six or seven or eight other oils that you would pres- you would you would recommend for the same types of things. Yeah. Well, so then in one level, so then when I'm making my products, that's where I'm like, okay, I'm going to take all these beauties and put them together because you know. So that's so I've kind of done you know, if you go into living libations, I've done some of that work for you, but also that is the whole fun. And that's why so many people love, uh, just cause then they can buy all their single things and have that whole array of oils and then make up their own stuff at home. It's sort of like, again, you know, when we talk about with peptides, they're so like, we're going to use BPC for this and that, but oh my God, it does that. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Or like this one for weight loss does, you know, and it's called like the, the AOD and, uh, the ones for obesity but meanwhile it's like helping mold and you know what i mean so they're they're like that too they're so multifaceted well they're pleiotropic right yes yeah. yeah. it's that pleiotropism it's that multifunctionality which i guess speaks to the origin of their origins in nature like nature mm-hmm. doesn't work as a single it doesn't mother nature doesn't create anything for one thing because that's just so inefficient it's all like lock and keys right yeah yeah. yeah, so it's it's much broader than that. So yeah, the, the frankincense for the hyperpigmentation, I think, yeah. really fancy. Yeah. So would you, if you were formulating something, like let's just say that you could formulate with a po- copper peptide like GHK, would you stack it again? Would you be layering it with things like yeah. frankincense and? Yeah, I take yeah because if we're yeah, I would take all those you know the ones that are good for um, sandalwood. You know, yeah. yeah, and breaking down the, uh, like that prevent the breaking down of the last in and collagen, we'd help ones with uh, hyperpigmentation. And I mean, basically, I, I would, it would work beautifully in any of our creams, you know, especially we have one that's uh, sundew and it has vitamin D in it because vitamin D uh, topically has a very good absorption, the fat soluble vitamin. Really? So yeah, so the sun cream, you know, I, I can't make any claims or obviously, but I have antidotal evidence from a doctor in Germany who was just using it and then just really wanted to test. So she, you know, tested her D levels before and after and was very satisfied with the product. Really? Yeah. Who knew? Who knew? That's so interesting. <laughs> okay, well, I have a list here. If you wonder why I'm looking over oh, here. Okay. Yes. It's not a list of things. Cause I want us to, cause we could talk for a really long time. The two of mm-hmm. us. Let's try <laughs> and make sure that we answer some of the questions. One, so one of the essential, oh, actually, one of the questions that came up is, and I didn't realize this was an issue, is somebody asked about essential oils that would be safe around cats and dogs. Are they? Yeah, so um, cats are a little more, and there's books on it, but ca- cats are a little more cautious, but I think some of the stuff out there is a little too cautious. You know what I mean? Like you can diffuse the oils and that kind of thing, but we don't really need to use them for like cat issues per se. Like that would need more guidance. Dogs are very hale and hearty with the essential oils and horses and stuff. So they're, they're really great, you know, for oral care or just helping if they have a little cut or, you know, just kind of taking some tea tree or eucalyptus and then going over their coat as a little like, you know, protection from, you know, walking in a forest filled with mosquitoes in June or something like that. Right. So, so you're, so the, the spray that you would, you would have uh, formulated for people as an anti bug spray. Yeah. We have one called foragers cologne. Yeah, so I and I've bought essential, and it may even be yours. I think that one of the shops I shop at on Saint. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Your stuff. Um, I would spray it on my hands and do exactly what you just did. I would yeah. rub my hands together and I would rub it, just run it over her fur. You know what I also find with bugs and stuff because we are in it, like we're not in it now, but 
it's intense up here. But I, I find like, because I'm, so I just naturally, obviously, you know, I, I'll get out of the, out of the lake and in the sun and I'll put on my best skin ever. Everybody loves sunshine. So I've got, I kind of have like an aura of essential oil molecules. Human on the planet. Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so I feel like they're just in my aura and I actually find, I don't even have to use something like the forager's cologne because they're annoying me, but they don't land on me. Like I just don't get bit. And I think it's because I do have a, you know, it's a thin layer of protection. And it reminds me a bit of the Ayurvedic practice of oiling the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a special term for it, but you know, it just, it does. I feel like it does add this layer of protection between you and the world or when you're out there sort of in the matrix traveling. I just feel like from how I've prepared myself just through the way of taking care of my body, you know, nothing that special on one level. It just, it prepares me more for the world. And it adds, I feel like to my immune system and it adds to like, instead of putting like some petroleum based cream on my yeah. hand, which is going to lower it. And then also create microimmune sponsors every day. Cause when you put that on your skin, it's just like your skin's going, okay, we got to work now to neutralize the toxins, you know? So that's being eliminated. And you just have that, the quality of oils around you. Nice. Yeah. Okay, um, here's one. And I, you, you, I, wrote, I asked you about this earlier and you wrote a really funny response. To this. <laughs> um, somebody's asking about safer options for lavender than lavender for sleep. And this is because poor lavender has been dragged through the mud. I actually think I read an article in the paper talking about how it was so estrogenic that small boys would be feminized, like would it would mess up their hormones and they wouldn't be little boys anymore. And so can we speak to that a little bit? Because I think, I feel like poor lavender's taken a real bad well, thing. Sure. And if we think about like whole, well, yeah, there are things we need to prevent our boys and girls from having, you know, oh, like yeah. soy formulas. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or, so or this, perfumes. Little yeah. kids with perfume. Yeah. Really? No. Yeah. <laughs> And a million other things. So yeah, there's definitely, we want to prevent um, getting those uh, xenoestrogens, metalloestrogens, or even the uh, mycoestrogens for sure. But lavender's not the culprit. And when, you, when, I, when I looked into the study, it was just like, not real lavender was used. So of course, it, it, yeah, it was, it, it's, it, it was like an adulterated lavender. And, and what are they adulterating with? It's with synthetic, you know, it's like adulterations, it's such a craft really. And it's, there's a science behind it. So it's just not, um, you know, it's going to have, we know with synthetic ingredients that they're endocrine disruptors. So it's really the study. So you could have done any oil almost and gotten virtually the same result. Probably. And so it's that, it's that synthetic lavender. So it's, you know, like, the, which there's a ton of. So if you, you know, like the Glade air freshener lavender, I'm not, I don't know if it was the same one. So that's really what I've studied. And then my good friend, Dr. Tisserand, Oh, I don't know if he's a doctor. Sorry. Anyway, Robert Tisserand. <laughs> um, he he he's he was a sort of the early in the wave of uh, essential oils because really the kind of second wave. There was this European wave in like the 40s, 50s, mm -hmm. and then there's sort of the second wave was starting in the 80s. And Tisserand wrote those books, and he has done such a great epic book called the Essential Oil Safety Data Manual. Oh wow! And um, you can look up pages of oils on Google Books and stuff because it, it's a textbook and it just even was updated like two years ago. And he also has a blog and you can read all about the lavender non-estrogenic effects there because he, he's just, he's always, you know, he's such a good researcher. So we're so very enough, appreciative. We don't need a replacement for lavender. We can no, use we don't. lavender. Now, is there anything else that you would recommend for someone who's looking to help with their sleep? Like I remember when yeah. I did... Um, I did my bulletproof coach training yeah. program and they were talking about different essential oils and they talked about a few of them to help with vivid dreaming. Yes. Um, and I'm trying to remember. Very sage, Angelica. Those yeah. Would be good for vivid they, dreaming. And was orange, would orange have been? I think, well, tangerine or mandarin as calming, but I don't know about dream, vivid okay. dreaming. So there were specific oils they were talking mm -hmm. about using in your bedroom before. Nice. Well, we have a beautiful, we have the sweet sleep serum, we have the sweet sleep pillow spray, and even the sweet sleep serum, again, all the essential oils work through inhalation or applying to the body, and some you can ingest, but you can't even ingest that one, and like you could put it in a little honey and some chamomile tea, you can put it in your bath before you go to bed, add some magnesium to that. Nice. You know? Okay, so there are, there are options, but lavender is not to be feared. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
Um, so, so this is a question which I think you've already sort of answered. This is somebody asking, you know, how hard is it to DIY your essential oils? And it seems to me from what we've been talking about, your main guidelines are making sure you get good materials to start with. Yes. Yeah. And from your book, a little bit of following your nose. It's, it sounds a little bit like teaching someone to cook, you know, yeah. you the basics and then you, someone who loves to eat and loves to experiment is basically invited to come into the kitchen and... Yeah, and it's so fun. Like, if you have any inclination into, like, mixing, you're, like, gonna... It's, like, so, so fun. Now, I don't know for that question if they're actually asking about distilling the oils, which uh, is a whole other thing. You yeah, can that's definitely... a whole different kettle of fish. Yeah, yeah. you can d do it yourself so much. And I've got a whole chapter on um, recipes in, in Renegade Beauty. I was gonna say this. Like, there's a... Yeah. Really, this is, like, a great primer for someone because, well, I don't know about a primer, like there's so much information here, but you're so generous here with like, with your recipes and your formulas for different things of different oils to consider. Blend. And I even do, cause to me, blend, I mean, you can be just really science like, or like factual about it. Like I'll put this with this and I need that. Like there's for sure. And you can just follow it, but it's a, it is also an art. And so I, I try to convey like sort of the intuitive process that I have. And I, I, I was born with some kind of synesthesia. So for me, blending has always been like, it's just all colors. So I feel like I'm actually just mixing colors and I basically nice. barely even need to smell, even though of course I do. And it's the really fun part of it all. But um, so I was trying to sort of convey that in the chapter on alchemy and blending and stuff. Great. Okay. Well, that's, that's awesome. I mean, hopefully that answers um, this person's question. Um, and then obviously, again, we talked already about finding high quality oils. So really being confident in your source, making sure there's those certificates of analysis. Mm -hmm. Kind of like when you're buying peptides too, right? We want to have and, and, yeah. So yeah. we know it does what it says it does. And if it's two bucks a bottle, then probably... It just can't be. It can't be, right? I mean, especially when you think of like that that rose oil, right? Like yeah. 60 buds for one drop. Like, let's put this in perspective, people. You know, it, it's going to take, and, and just the process. Mm -hmm. just, but also, no, again, like that, if you do buy the rose oil, that's probably going to last you a long time. Like even me, and I'm like, you know, my little, it does, you know, because you're using one drop at a time. Right. And of course, you can always dilute and expand it because you certainly don't need to use any of them in their full concentration, unless it's sort of specific applications. Right. Like if the, but I like to see, you want to seal it with the pure essential oil because even though it's called an essential oil, there's no fat component to it. Oh. So they're all volatile compounds and they're evaporative. So if you left the top off your lavender, it will go. And so if you have a cut, it's very cleansing and antiseptic. You know, you just put the peppermint, lavender, or frankincense right on and it cleans and the skin starts to seal once the skin is sealed, then you, I would add like a drop of a, a serum or a jojoba oil, and then you're working on preventing that keloid from forming. Interesting. Amazing. Okay. Um, so this woman, this person, this member uses it in her humidifier mm, and on her skin. She's asking about other ways. And I'm guessing like ingestion. Yeah. Um, diffusion. Yeah. Just ingestion is always sort of with some footnotes, so to speak. Yeah, right. You're not, yeah. And again, it's one drop and, and you have to usually add it to just like a bit of honey or like a drop of olive oil or like a fat thing. Some you can just put like, you know, again, sort of peppermint frankincense, you could put right in your mouth again, one drop, but then there's ones like cinnamon, clove, oregano, Coffee. so hot, <laughs> you know, and when you're buying oil of oregano in a store, it's 3% right? So that's like, just to give you an idea, 3% diluted in olive oil, and then you're having a drop of that 3%. And that's how effective it is. Oh, no, I have a girlfriend yeah. who almost drove off the highway. I, she, she oh. came to see me and I said, oh, you know, you need this oregano oil because it's antiviral, antifungal, the whole nine yards. And she yeah. was down with something. And for me with oh. all of oregano, even with my son, if he's going to use it because he thinks he's coming down with something, he's got a probiotic to follow it up with it. Yeah. Or so, like, you know, a few hours later. Anyway, she's driving down the highway and decides she's going to drop it right into her mouth. Oh, no. <laughs> she calls me from the side oh, of the road. No. Holy shit, you almost killed me. I'm like, I did not tell you to chug it out of the bottle. Did you notice how itty bitty the bottle is? <laughs> That's usually a sign. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so ingestion with caution. Um, 
And then where to start in terms of best choices for the individual? I mean, I think, I think getting your hands, whether it's this book or another book, but really understanding kind of what your goals are, right? Yeah, um, for sure. And then also I always say, well, the best essential oil you have is you know, the one to use because often they're, they definitely have their highlights and what they can do. But if you have, oh, like if you, something happened and you just have one, it's like that might be just perfect too. Are there, they're, they're interchangeable a bit. Are there, is there, is there stuff that people should watch for? Like, are there contraindications to send? There are a few. Um, generally, the ones that are uh, available are good. There's also a lot of misinformation about pregnancy and essential oils. Yeah. Generally speaking, all the ones that we offer, you, you know, any product we make is absolutely fine. And the pregnancy cautions come with like, no, you're not going to drink a 30 mils of wintergreen. No. Again, it's a drop of time, but I go through that in the, there's a pregnancy chapter in the book because it's time to really clarify that. And I think a lot of rumors started because a lot of people write books and they just repeat the other books. <laughs> He's doing the actual information. <laughs> you know, again, Tisserand's a good place to understand pregnancy and essential oil safety. So that there's that safety realm. And then, um, uh, you know, obviously there's the dilution realm for those hot oils we talked about, like cinnamon, clove, oregano. And yeah, then there's- three. Teacher, yeah, I find can be really harsh if you it don't. can't. Well, it sh may not be real then. Oh, really? Yeah, because it's pretty gentle, even though it's it's strong like a uh, antiseptic. But it yeah. it's it's kind of like lavender and its universal application with generally not irritating the skin. But again, like lavender may not irritate. And again, we're talking real lavender, like ninety nine point nine percent of the population. But for some reason, there could just be that person that it irritates. So there's always the individuation. Yeah. Even on a wound though? Yeah. It wouldn't really. Okay. Well, no, I, that's what, like, oh yeah, you got a wound. The bottle I have is yeah. fake. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing like, oh yeah, if there is any burn or bite or a cut, the first thing going on is like pure essential oils, like frankincense, lavender, peppermint, tea tree, immortelle. If I had any of the rose auto, if I had any of those on, on hand, I would be pouring them in. Okay. And, like just right into the wound. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, but the one I think a, a good thing to know is that some of them are phytosensitive, phytotoxic, which means um, undiluted with sun exposure, they will burn your skin in a weird way. Okay. So um, now we use citrus. So some of these are citrus, neroli, angelica. Uh, there's a few others, but those ones like bergamot, which is a citrus. We use these in, in all of our skincare products and for the face and stuff, but they're in the proper dilution. I mean, you have to basically sort of like 20% strength or higher or, or to 100%. So it's fine once it's like with jojoba and everything, but straight up, if you put like lime right on your hand and then you sat in the sun, you would have a burn. This is not, okay. uh, not a good burn. Okay. No burns right. are good. Well, so yeah. for the most part, I don't think that'll be a concern for most people. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's come to another hot topic. We we dealt with the lavender, yeah. thieves oil. Yes, which I remember learning at, at school in my holistic nutrition program that thieves oil is the best. It's this combination of essential oils that I don't know somebody came up with in the Middle Ages or something. Yeah, well, actually, it was with the plague. Right. Um, it was called yeah, the thieves vinegar, which was made out of infu you know vinegar infusions, hot hot remedy back in those days. And um, so there was that aspect. So the robber, the thieves would douse themselves in it and then uh, steal from people who were, know, I guess, who were the, I don't know, I guess there was a lot of dead bodies around or something, there right? Were, yeah. yeah. No. And then I love also there was, um, you see there's these beaker, beak, like beaks, yes. like cones, and they would put and stuff those with her, like aromatic herbs. Cause again, it's, not all plants can make an essential oil. They have to have these aromatic molecules. Yeah. And they also like, it's, it's not scientific, but they kind of hover around the plant. Kind of like, you know, like orange has, like if you break it open, some obviously there's juice in it, but if it's the peel, that stuff squirting out is the essential oil. Well, it's, and it's like a little aura. Yeah, like mm -hmm. a little halo. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, they would stuff those. But of course, in those days, there was all kinds of things with aromatics, like little wrist pomeners, and you'd be like, inhaling them or like stuffed handkerchief chip chiefs you know, hankies <laughs> yeah <laughs> well the world was a smellier place in general right yes well yeah on both levels i'm sure there was a lot more beautiful natural smells and then a lot more like let's just toss our 
feces out the side of the, the window. Well, and dead bodies at the, at the time. And dead bodies, yeah. yeah. So for the thieves' oil, so it's now traveled down the ages, and there mm -hmm. are certain. There's one company in particular, I think, that kind of owns the name or the right to use that yeah. name. But is it all that, or are there better formulas out there? Like, well, sometimes I feel like sometimes um, you know we'd have to get monographs on the oils, but there has been challenges to the purity of some of the multi-level marketing oils, and there's a lot of websites that go like people have tested the oils, and it's like, hmm, you know, not so pure. So it's like I can't speak directly to that, but yeah, yeah those are the it's like it's the classic. So it's like I don't know what it's like clove and I don't know what else you want to read the label. <laughs> I, I don't have it. Okay. Yes. Okay. I don't own, I don't own yeah. these oils. Oh, there you go. I just know that it's a very. I think it's to your point. It's cloves, and there's probably oregano. Like just like the most. Powerful. Yeah. And then people will use it to clean. To clean. Things. Yeah. But you and you, again, you can do that with any essential oil. Like again, we talked about. You know, you can mix them to clean surfaces and stuff, and it it can be those oils. But again, as we talked about, sent most of like to varying degrees, all essential oils are antifungal, antibacterial, and antiviral. So you're, you know, even if it's just you're using eucalyptus, you're going to be able to clean your hands or clean your countertops. You're going to be a lot better off because you're getting, you know, you're adding to the soap. So yeah, we all know soap kills viruses, breaks down that, the coat of the virus. Awesome. Essential oils in your soap. Cool. Cause then you've broken down the coat and then you've got the essential oils doing some more cleanup work. Amazing. So that's good. We have two blends that we've made. Um, one sort of the green immunolum and then one sort of the hot berry. So there's, we've made one with shishandra and sea buckthorn berry and grapefruit and clove and cinnamon and some others. And it's, sounds amazing. It's so good. Like sore throats, all that kind of stuff. You can also just put a drop on a little bit of chocolate and you can eat it that way. Mm -hmm. And then I sort of like the camphorous classic immunolum, which is like your, you know, and you kind of got that doctrine of signatures thing. So a lot of the plant oil, I mean, not plant, uh, leafy leaf oils are very good for the lungs. So we've got like rosemary, eucalyptus, peppermint, hyssop, oregano. I can't remember them all. And they're just like really clearing up the, all the passageways. So how would you use, so question, yeah. do you use those for a sore throat? Or if somebody has some kind of respiratory thing going on, uh, you know what I love for the respiratory issues is the salt pipe. So we have these salt pipes, which are like little ceramic. I wish I had one in front of me. This is like this little ceramic thing. It kind of looks like a neti pot, but it's okay. like a dry version. And there's salt in it. And then you put essential oils on the salt. Yeah. And then, um, and then you inhale that. So it's a, it's a mouth inhaling and you breathe in through the nose. No, you breathe in through the mouth and then out through the nose. Yeah. And then it's also cool is you can do alternate nostril breathing, which just like you just, cause you're sending the, the salt molecules and the oils up. It's so clearing for that whole passageway. Yeah. And you can sit on a plane and do that. You can watch a movie and do it. You can do your yoga practice and then do that for the meditation part. And it's very, very, very helpful for people for clearing out all kinds of things. Like again, you know, so, like. So is it preventative and curative? Like curative being not exactly yeah. the word I'm looking at. Like I'm not talking cure. It, does, it detoxifies issues. So yeah, so if you, it, yeah, it's preventative and I'm in it. I got to help, you know, I in, in it remedy. Yeah. And, that, and again, you can just use any oils in there, but using the Immunolume, the classic one is great and and then you can also put them you could put your put a pod on the stove at like just one or two and then get it steaming and then put a, a blanket over and inhale that way you can put it in the humidifier you can have it in the bath and if it's warm you can inhale it that way you can put it in some oil and put it all over your sinuses and chest you can put it in the diffuser right beside like you know if you've got a cold and just have that going all night because they're going to work on the airborne bacteria as well yeah interesting and so when you were talking about the one with the sore throat might you gargle with it or it would just yeah well it? you could uh, yeah so put then but again it's one drop and then you're going to put that in, in water and gargle you know what i mean so you're yeah. not going to pour it in straight and gargle <laughs> just in case and uh yeah like any way you can get it in or on your body like make a hot tea add a drop to honey make a warm tea Amazing. Okay. Yeah. That sounds fantastic. Um, let me see what else is here. So somebody was asking if you had to pick, this is a good question. <laughs> if you had to pick five oils, what would be, what would be your five yeah. foundation oils? 
That is hard because they're all like my children, but uh, know, you know, yeah, sometimes- some of the ones I've mentioned because they're just because I love them because you really generally can use them undiluted too, so they feel really ready to go. Yeah. But peppermint for sure because that is like portable ice. So anywhere where you needed ice, you can use that, and you don't have to carry around a cold bag of ice. <laughs> Like even, and we now have this Yoni serum for after you've given birth, it's called Petal Soother. We have the Petal Primer for pre-birth preparations for getting everything ready. And then I made this right after I gave birth because I was like that feeling of like, I got to go pee and I'm not sure how that's going to feel, that first pee. So I took peppermint oil and, and coconut oil and just lathered up and then I was fine. So I made a different, like a, obviously it's a, a little more exciting than, than just coconut, coconut oil and peppermint, but <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's like cooling and soothing and anti-inflammatory and it feels it's like ice. Too, right? Yeah. But if you got that irritate, like a mosquito bite that's itching you, one drop, you never think about it again. Really? Okay. Yeah. It will clear, you know, a cut, a sting, a hangnail that's irritating you, like all that peppermint. Okay. A bruise, it's hematoic, so it, it will draw the blood away to prevent bruising. Um, a weird, you know, you need something in your mouth to just like soothe it. So peppermint's wonderful. Then like frankincense, yeah. because again, it does like all those things, but without the ice feeling, but it, it does, you know, it's antiseptic, antibacterial, and then it has just such a beautiful resonance for like meditation and breathing. Um, I just remind, it's like, my, it's like fortitude. I used to make a blend for Margaret Atwood, um, before she would speak and it was, to, you know, we wanted to give her that calm strength. Mm-hmm. So that's frankincense. It's just such a good friend. And then Rose Otto, because it's just the queen of the oils. And again, you can use it like you have been the peppermint and it's not going to be cooling, but it does provide sort of an antiseptic numbing. And then it's just, it's Rose, okay. you know? And I'm thinking like neroli because again, who doesn't want to smell Not like really. they're walking through an orange grove? Yeah, yeah, no, you know. it's beautiful. So that's one of the only oils that's like not named after the plant. It's named after a duchess in Italy that used to scent her gloves with orange blossom oil. Wow. Ner- and her name was like Nerol or whatever, something like that. Something and bad. then the la- uh, Immortal, I think, would be my other. So what is Immortal? Choice. I've read about it in your book, so tell me about it. I, I don't know. Yes, yeah, so it's got a few names. So that's the common name. Its Latin name is Hilichrysum Italicum. And that is, again, it's, it's a beautiful oil that's so extraordinary for skin rejuvenation, for healing scars and keloids. Um, and it's one of, from, a, one of, from one of my favorite distillers in Corsica. Uh, yeah. it's just this beautiful hillside plant and, uh, it's quite extraordinary. And I remember when I read about it, but couldn't find it or smell it. I was like, I must find you. <laughs> I have to have it. I need yes. that. Okay. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Oh no. We did Immortal. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. So that, I mean, there's so many more questions here. I feel like we've been going forever. Maybe like just quick fire. Yeah. Um, there's a question here about essential oils for increasing testosterone. Yeah, I got to say the oils aren't really, just like the lavender is not really affecting the estrogen of our boys. They're not really for, like, they're not really going to get anything going in the hormone le- level, except Vitex does show that it can help with progesterone. Okay. Um, the plant, as we know, and there is an essential oil. So, you know, you can use a drop, a drop on the wrist a day maybe in the luteal phase but they're not your this was coming from a guy so probably not how about circulation (laughs) circulation so so many for circulation they really have such a great affinity with the lymphatic system right so i recommend like we we make a blend called verve tonic but again if you you can take oils that are safe undiluted and again it has to be real but like your rosemary or eucalyptus, cypress, you could put one drop in the palm of your hand, then take your dry brush and you just gently coat those bristles for a moment and then do your regular dry brushing routine and okay. it will really get things going. But yeah, they're very great affinity for circulatory and lymph. Fantastic. Um, Which is a great reason to use it for your deodorant because then it's working on that lymphatic system. Lymphatic system. There's another one here on pheromones, which I, that reminds me of a story that I read in your book Mm -hmm. about the apple. Yes. (laughs) I was like, okay, 
<laughs> I'm trying to be open-minded. This is not working for me. <laughs> but, why don't you share with our yeah. listeners the apple story? <laughs> yeah, that's and again, that's kind of like back in the old days. We we're talking about all kinds of smells back then. Yeah, so they would peel a part of an apple. I mean, the, they being like lovers, and just keep an armpit, and then give the apple wrapped in a hanky to their loved one. Yeah. So yeah, to share the smell and the pheromones. pheromones. Yeah. Right. So in you know, and what we're doing with our synthetic smells and masking and birth control pills and all these things is we're really messing with the messaging of potential partners and that kind of other olfactory connection because apparently i don't know the distance but there's a point where we are taking all pheromone information and assessing people on like a subconscious level mm -hmm. so a lot of information that can get exchanged that way although not right now, maybe with our physical distancing. But um, so we want to like celebrate that a bit. And that's what I love about the essential oils is um, there's a, you know, a great affinity. They have an affinity with our, our smells and our sweat and they make it better. So when you use an essential oil, like for your armpits, and that's what people say, they'll come out of hot yoga or working out and, the, and people will like, you smell so good. Like, <laughs> It's like Pied Piper. They have people following them. What are you wearing? What are you doing? Because then you're, you know, you're sweating, you're letting go of all your stuff, but it's combining with this sandalwood of the essential oils. And then you're just set, sending out like some really beautiful, like you just take your, whatever you're rocking in your own pheromone and you amplify it with the oils and you just, it just turns what could be slightly skanky into something really great. That's and it's, amazing. there's so nothing the fire, like, not really it's about using essential oils so that they amplify and augment yeah. your, because your pheromones are yours, like yeah. unique to each person, right? If I, yeah. If I'm correct, like biologically, yeah. we're, we're unique that way. And yeah. so, um, so yeah, so the answer for the pheromone question is don't be using that. What's that stuff called? No, oh, yeah, oh. I don't, yeah, I can't Axe. remember. Is it ax? Oh, there is ax for sure. But any of that stuff. There's and I, I, obviously I'm biased, but people smell so good when they use um, our, our, like or natural perfumes and deodorants, but especially ours. They just, it's like, yes. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. No, it's good. Sure. Well, I had a girlfriend whose son, who's my son's age, when they were about 15 or 16 years old, started using that Nice. Stuff. The ad, no, the oh, oh, sorry, the, yeah, they're not, they're yeah. not good stuff. It, you know, the, and the ad campaign was literally you spray this stuff on, and women oh, were yeah. crazy for you. Yeah. And I remember sitting there going, No, oh, no, stop. <laughs> <laughs> there was no stopping. Um, okay, and then, uh, finally, which, and I know that there's a couple of very specific ones for headaches. Because this time yes. it's into circulatory to, are there specific oils you might, you might, someone yeah, might. Yeah, well, you know, peppermint is so good because you put that here or wherever, you know, like line there. Again, one drop will do it. You could do a drop and then you can go like this and you can put it on the base of your neck and that is good. Like that really, for, like it just shrinks that, you know, it's calming and cooling. We make, you know, there's a roll on, we make, we have peppermint pal, which is like, because I recommend peppermint so much. So it's sort of like a semi diluted one, but still super, super potent. It's basically like about 80% peppermint and then just a little bit of lube. So it has more applications. And then we have one called tonic and that you can roll all over and it's like peppermint, and marjoram and lavender, all the anti headache ones. Wow. So it's so good. And it just helps too. If you've got a study or something, it's just really like, hello. <laughs> So, so that's the last one I was going to ask you about was cognitive, like, for, yes. you know, again, our community is big into the nootropics, into mm -hmm. compounds that help to wake up the brain, that help. Yeah, rosemary, lemon, and those have been studied, like, you know, lemon was studied in use in banks, and people were a lot more clear, and work production was higher, and all that kind of stuff. So that could be diffusing as you're working, and on okay. your nootropics. <laughs> okay, nice. Well, you know, it's interesting about rosemary, because one of the things that I heard and read and learned about a while ago is somebody talking about rosemary as being a DNA adaptogen. Mm. It actually helps our DNA to express the way that it, genetic expression, it actually affects that genetic expression positively. That makes it, sense. Um, it just speaks to that power of those aromatics. Yeah. And that like, why not again, have using substances that have positive effects on gene expression? Like why wouldn't we be? 
Absolutely. As opposed to negative. Yeah. Which, which so much of the, um, really the whole world of regular body care, like just is a problem for gene expression period. Absolutely. You know? Well, I know walking into a house where they have one of those air, those synthetic air fresheners plugged into the wall. Yeah. Um, like I instantly will get a headache. Yeah. Me too. That's what early on too. Oh, we talked about, you know, smelling and how do you know for smelling? I don't know why, but there's a, I just literally, what I discovered 18 was I was like, oh, I have like an alarm that goes off right here. So the moment something comes in, it's like, Wah! <laughs> and that like, you know, <laughs> so that's how I know. I'm just like, whoa. Well, I guess it's like anything else. You, it, you know, you educate your palate when it comes to tasting. Yeah. You educate your nose when it comes to smelling. It's true. I really feel like discernment, which is something we all need, especially in this age where everything's available and all information is available, that we really want to hone that in and become connoisseurs and discerning for our lives. And really kind of, you kind of work it out like a muscle and it gets like stronger and better and refined and good amazing okay last question of the day and then we're gonna have to close this off because i think we've been going for a while is in this current world where you know we feel increasingly challenged in the world and what is it that you wear on your day-to-day -day, you know when we're trying to to enhance our immunity enable our body to protect itself from pathogens i mean obviously there's nothing that's 100 percent. you have mm -hmm. to be smart and all that kind of stuff but you know, you might have a bottle of this in your in your bag so you can spray your hands and surfaces. Mm -hmm. Is the, are there any particular products that you would use to enhance or? Well, I really feel like just generally, like whatever, like what I do to care for my body, which is you know, not, like everything we kind of talked about. You know, oiling the skin. Um, you know, wearing my beautiful poetic pits, all that kind of stuff. So I just feel like I don't do anything above and beyond that. So, but I'm also trying to picture like, but because I also live here, I don't need to do much. But if I go out into the world, so airplane travel, yeah. and these are the products I made for that. So it's really funny because I, we, we've been selling um, organic. We, make, we take vintage sheets and then we have organic um, cotton mm -hmm. on the other side and we make masks. We've been making them for years. Why have we been making them for years? Because basically I'm like Howard Hughes when I travel and I don't want to really right. touch or smell anything. So it wasn't really to... Uh, the masks aren't really to like, because we all know they're, they're not, it's not 100% going to be protective. But what I made them for was so that you could pour, put, put a few drops of essential oils on there. And then you're just in your own little garden when you're on the plane. Brilliant. So yeah. what are the oils that you would use? Well, any of the ones I've mentioned. And then again, we've got our Immunolume. We've got the Longevity. We've got the Verve Tonic. We've got uh, Breathing Bombs. You could take Black Spruce. You could take Frankincense, a Cape Chamomile, like whatever you want to smell. So sometimes I'll take those heavy hitters like a Rosemary and then add something really fun like Neroli so that I'm in the plane and I'm kind of in a flower garden at the same time, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. And then, I have, and then we had our hand sanitizer and tiny pocket ones because... Again, when I'm out in that world, I'm like, but for years, my whole mission is to not touch anything and to, again, just be in my own little world of smell because, yeah, yeah, there's I, a lot of smells out there I don't want. <laughs> love it. Well, I know, I know what I'm doing after this. I'm quite sure. <laughs> so, so Nadine, why don't you let people know where they can find you, how they can shop on your, I mean, if they want to buy your products, how they can find them. Also, I think we maybe had a little discount code we were going to give people. And also, guys, if you're interested in reading about this, and I don't care. I mean, there's definitely a lot here for women, but there's lots here for men, too. Yes. Uh, Renegade Beauty, it's, it reads like not a textbook. I'm here to tell you. It's, it's so much more than that. So this is a great book if anybody's interested. And there's even, like, amazing pictures. Like, it's just... I, I a lot it. of the pictures are from our land and photos that I've taken. And I love, like, when I've done book signing stuff, I'll have, like, some men come up, and it's, like, dog-eared and underlined, <laughs> and they're like, okay, I need to do this, this, and this. So it's really good. Um, but, yeah, livinglibations.com. We're also on, like, Instagram, that kind of thing. And really, truly, any, you can email us any questions, dental health, well-being. We will answer to the best of our ability or send you on your way. And we also do consultations for free. We didn't even dental get book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot to go. With. And yeah, we did want to do a, a code. I think we're going to do longevity. Okay, so is it just longevity? Longevity? Longevity. We longevity. haven't used that one yet, so. <laughs> okay, so it's just longevity, and longevity will get people like a bit of a discount? Or? Yeah, we'll do 10% on that one, and it will be 
We'll do it more than one time. So it can be a special code for the group. Amazing. So guys, longevity at livinglibations.com. And this is Nadine Artemis. Thank you so much for your kindness and your generosity today. We love talking to you. Um, I'm Natalie Nidham. And until we meet again, and maybe next time we'll just, we'll do like a peptide and essential oil stacking episode yeah. or something. <laughs> love it. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.